Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is the Escaping and Deflating Atheism Hangout, which we're going to try and do every Sunday night, theoretically, um, even though we're running against the Super Bowl. Um, it's the third battle, yes. Yeah, so I, I don't watch baseball, so I don't know what this is. <laughs> Did they get a lot of baskets? I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I hope they make plenty of goals, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm not that dumb. Uh, I actually kind of – Tom Brady's an old guy, so I hope he does well. Um, but other than that, I don't care. So anyway, <laughs> this week, let's see. We were thinking about doing a takedown video, and then we realized there is just so much e atheist stupid out there, and it seems to be multiplying. I saw – um, well, I saw some several interesting things, and so this week I, I think I'm just going to throw it out there. If anybody thinks there's one in particular they want us to take apart, let us know. There, there's just this otherwise this endless stream of sameness out of all the atheist videos that are out there. I got into it on Twitter wars with some of my old pals from like GamerGate who are mad at me for being uh, um, uh, mean to atheists, which I find ironic on a number of uh, fronts. He goes by dat no fact. I'll just send this shout out to him if he ever wants to do it. Um, uh, some weeks ago, I made um, a proof of God from science video, and I made some very specific challenges in that video that have yet to be directly addressed by anybody. Yes. Um, that's not a single one, not a single commenter. That guy and others basically misstated my arguments uh, dismiss the data um, while encouraging people not to bother watching the video. Yes. Because they, because they dishonestly shrunk it down to things that aren't there. So I'm going to repeat the challenge on that video. There's four pieces of evidence there for God from science. All point to a guiding intelligence operating the universe. All are pieces of evidence that are contemporary, current in physics, uh, current in, uh, in in what you would call uh, reliable uh, medical tracking surveys. It's all evidence. Now, because it is, you know, it's science, it's subject to being overturned at any time, of course. But in the meantime, I want you to find anybody who's a scientist who will put his credentials on it and say that is not evidence of an intelligent thing running the universe. Yeah. To hear a scientist say that is not evidence. And until I get that, I'm going to assume no one in the atheist community can refute that that is, in fact, all evidence from science in contemporary yeah. science and respectable science at that. If you can't produce a scientist who says this isn't science or this isn't evidence, produce him. I want a name. I want credentials. Until you do that, you're just another lying atheist scumbag yeah. misstating someone's arguments. So there, there's what I got to say about that. What do you think? Well, what, what I have to say is... is, is <laughs> Uh, you attract more flies with uh, with honey than vinegar. So when you call them lying atheist scumbags, no, no, no. But that's actually not true. That's actually not true. What I found is on YouTube, you actually get more flies with with vinegar a lot of times. You know. Well, here's the thing. I, I this is the thing. One, I, I had this in a hangout with Brett Keen and some other guys too. Um, a growing number of us have noticed that atheists will literally lie to your face about the science. For all they talk about the science, they'll I, mean, I wasn't even the one who said it. It was a guy I had never met there. We were having this hangout, and he said, man, they'll lie to you about the science. Yeah. And they will. I have an interview coming up with a guy from the Freedom from uh, Atheism Foundation. Yes. And I'm going to be doing an interview with him sometime in the next week or so. He's they, a molecular they, biologist, and it was studying molecular biology that made him realize, you know what, this just doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they're, they're actually uh, uh, pretty protective of their identities, I was under the impression. They are, although one of them recently came out and did an interview under his real name. So um, we're going to see. I think, I think we're seeing a break here because there was another uh, well-known atheist blogger just in the last week or so. She also wrote for Huffington Post, announced she was not only becoming Christian but Catholic. Ooh, yeah. Was that Lee Labresco? I think that was her, Yeah. I think we're going to see a trend on that because basically a lot of, uh, unlike what a lot of people think, Catholics have a very rich uh, intellectual tradition. Uh, uh, definitely. Communism is very powerful. We have a lot. If you're a sci into science, my God, we got a lot of science. Um, <laughs> and we're very science friendly in the Catholic Church. That's probably why we attract certain type of people. I, I, I always got the feeling that, that, that Catholicism is, is the nerdiest religion. If, if you're of a sort of nerdy bent of mind, there's a lot to kind of chew on there, you know? 
Oh, there is. There is. Um, and I, I'll give it to you. Yeah, it is. In fact, sometimes Catholics get knocked for an excess of that by like the Eastern Orthodox, especially. But in these times, I think it's called for, right? Because it's just like um, the level of the discourse on the God issue. When our choice yes. is Sam Harris and 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 ken ham something's broken right <laughs> there really is what is what's what do you been seeing in your part of the woods in atheist no well no when you said something's broken it actually brought to mind a a, a, a very excellent essay by a, a david bentley hart and its exact name escapes me it's on firstthings.com but uh he does says that he does say that that uh new atheism represents a disaster a, a kind of intellectual and moral and spiritual disaster and that something something has taken leave of our discourse something that used to inform both both belief and unbelief a, a, a sort of grandness of vision that ha, that has been kind of banished and now we all have this world dealing with this kind of insipid tunnel visioned adolescent garbage basically i mean Send me a link to that, and I'll make sure to put that in the low bar. It sounds okay. like something I'd want to read. It is absolutely. It is. I'm not overselling it here. It's absolutely one of the best pieces of writing on the internet. So, well, and first things is an excellent publication, by the way. Yeah. If anybody out there is looking for smart Christian thinking from a really highly educated and thoughtful level, first things has always got something interesting going on. And again, I'm not to belabor this point, but a lot of times when I'm like reading first things, it's like what. What is the atheist equivalent? Is there anything that even comes within an arm's length of this that is arguing on a high level for atheism? I honestly don't know. I, it doesn't exist. One of the things we yeah. saw this week, uh, which I guess I should put a link to, is that Professor Jordan Peterson up there in Toronto, another Catholic, uh-oh, um, uh, had a two-part conversation with Sam Harris and on his own on sam harris's own you know turf and left him stumped on the second one i had met he had a first conversation with sam harris i and i think some others had messaged him saying sam harris is not dealing with you honestly get tougher on him yeah. i don't know if he heard us say that or not uh, but he did the second one and he did leave sam harris flummoxed and it was he left him flummoxed on something i didn't expect but you know there's so many areas right he left him flummoxed on uh Neither Sam nor any other atheist philosopher can come up with an objective definition of what truth is. Yes. At all. And just totally left them flummoxed, um, which also happens to be true, by the way. I mean, they've been trying for decades. They can't do it. It's just like with morals. Mm. They can talk all they want about morals or ethics. Even the best atheist philosophers on ethics are now you know, starting to say maybe we have to take Pascal's wager and pretend there's God anyway, because with no objective standard outside yeah. human beings. Well, what, what's that? Nothing nothing objective. What's that? You have nothing objective with no, yeah. you've, you've surrendered objectivity and atheists have to face that that's what they've done. Yeah. Well, that's uh, what Sam Harris would do is he would simply uh, uh, redefine creaturely well-being as morality or, or whatever whatever maximizes creaturely well-being. It's like basically evaluating an integral or something. You, know, you find the well, maximum yeah. area under the curve or something. And so, but then you've just redefined a term. So why do we have two different terms for morality and creaturely well-being if, if you're just going to state that they are the same? Well, and then you've got the further problem if you go into maximum pleasure, which Sam has suggested before, my creaturely well-being, that, that that's incoherent too. You've got to start to define it. You're going to define it by longevity. You're going to find, define it yeah. as happiness. Are you going to define it as X percent are happy? And what is that percent? Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's still madness. You have no objective criteria there. And therefore, everybody's opinion is as good as anybody else's. And, and in, invariably, you're going to run across a, a, a thought experiment. Let's say you have a, a village of sadists, and they like they like torturing the the, the stupid, and and the the pleasure they get from torturing the the stupidest members of their tribe is so much greater than the pain that is felt by the ones who are being tortured. So, would you say that is that is a plus in this hedonic calculus of uh, of uh, you know? Sam Harris, I mean, 
I it's it's amazing. I remember hearing atheists as far back as the '70s saying, "With more research, they would find a way yeah. to have a, a with more research." I heard that "with more research" line again just in the last couple months. That's so, naturalism of the gaps. Yeah, it's naturalism of the gaps, which we've seen in a whole lot of other things too. Atheists do it constantly. Yeah. Um. Uh. I mean, it's it's really. I'm so I, I used to like to say God in the gaps is only believed in by fundamentalist Christians and atheists, yeah. but in point of fact, it's like no, they, they've gone so much further. They do have this atheism in the in the gaps. They do have this naturalism in the gaps. Look again at all the scientific stuff I've given you. And by the way, there's more than what I gave you on that video I referenced, Proof of God from Science. There's way more than that. Okay. Um, but I'm just saying, if you go and look at that when you hear the atheists responding to it, they start coming up with alternate explanations or just saying with time and more study, we'll know better. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's totally a faith leap. Yeah. That's an evidence-free faith leap. I mean, really, which is why I would go back to saying, if you're going to say that's not science, and if you're going to say it's not evidence, get a scientist who agrees with you who will say that. Nah, they're not going to. Anyway, to go back to it, um, we've seen that. We've seen some high-profile conversions. I, and I think... I think what I keep worrying, hoping to see, um, what I have hoped to see in uh, the Escaping Atheism Project, as obnoxious as we are and how much we offend people, although notice how nobody ever cares how much atheists are offended or, or how much of atheists offend others. They never care about that. Yeah. They're mad at me for me being offensive to atheists. And it's like, you hypocrites. You you made Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens your heroes, and now you want to whine that somebody's being mean back to you? Yeah, it, it, it all it all goes back. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to get you off track here, no, but, but go it goes back to like a lot of stuff that we talked about. How the the it, new atheism basically began with 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 kind of uh, uh, Dawkins. Little little attack on conversational tolerance. Now we say, well, atheists are the biggest beneficiaries of conversational tolerance, and they're the ones who cannot abide being exposed to things they don't like. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and and you'll see on like on like uh, uh, you know, we fucking love atheism or atheist republic, and they always have the the you know Christopher Hitchens or or who's that British comedian? I forget. I forget. Pride. Right. Yeah, Stephen okay. Fry. And I would say, oh, well, I don't, care. I don't care if it offends you. That's not a thing. It's like, no, atheists are the ones who are offended. They are the ones who are triggered. They are the ones who can't stand to be exposed to uh, different points of view. That's right. You see it all the time. In fact, they can't even handle being contradicted. Well, yes. You know, I they can't. It's, it's exactly like talking to one of the social justice weirdos. It's just... Um, it, 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 it's funny because they literally seem, many of them seem to think they're a superior class of human being. Like one of the things I keep going on about is Christians should not trust atheists, especially like in the fight against radical Islam. And they get so offended, right? Um, but we have documentation and I mean, I've had them, one of them actually responded to me and said, excuse me, you can't generalize about all atheists like that. Yeah. Now, now just no problem I, generalizing Christians. But but now just but, but wait, get the get the uppity uh, attitude here. Just because I disapprove of religion doesn't mean you can't trust me. And I'm like, yes, it does. Fuck you. I don't need your permission or your approval to be religious. Thank you. Yes. I mean, just that he would even think, oh, it's my place to approve or disapprove. Really? Yes. 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 You, you must defer to their their more enlightened uh, viewpoint. And, and, and it's fine, you know, you can have your disapproval. I can disapprove back, and I don't care if you like it, right? I yeah. mean, when I was an atheist, I never was that rude. Well, unless they were to, to what I genuinely considered a cult. And by the way, you can tell the difference. Thank you. I, You know, Jehovah's Witness has deep, deep problems. Scientology has deep, deep problems. These aren't mainstream religions. Um, they're just not. Um, which gets to my other thing, the way atheists expect not to disambiguate religion do you know what i mean like we're not we're not we're supposed to treat them all as individuals but we're just supposed to accept religious people as a blanket thing yes yes that that is the strangest thing especially what when they treat a, a religion capital r religion as if it were a doctrine yeah. as opposed as opposed to what they are and it's like oh well you could you could argue about the the specifics but religion or, or capital f faith it's like, well, either you have 
you leave faith or you have faith or something. And, and, and it's like, no, you have faith in something. Faith is I, not a self-contained concept. I have made friends who are Muslims. And while I think there's deep problems in that religion, I know those people. And furthermore, I know they have concepts like honor and honesty and, and lying to people's a sin. And they, they have certain values. I can I know what they are and yeah. can expect them to be respected. Um, even if, you know, the radical jihadi scare me. The atheists always seem to be like, I should just accept by default their character is good until tell up to tell proven otherwise. And it's like, man, I don't know you, and you're starting this by telling me something about your character. Yeah. If you were just uninterested in religion, you wouldn't insist on self identifying with such a political and ideological label. You just say, yeah. Oh, I'm not interested, I'm not religious, I'm not interested. Yeah, like no, they they they've been inculcated with this idea that they are the default rational people, and how dare you even suggest that they're not? Um, and uh, that's got to change. What we're trying to do on escaping atheism just is partly just that. We want the Overton window to shift. I want hmm. atheists need to get more self-reflective, and if they want, yeah. then they deserve the reputation they get. Did you hear about the blow up between Lauren Southern and Thunderfoot? I was very amused. Uh, I, 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 I did not see it directly. I saw a video about it from not, not even a, a really even from a religion, but it, it really seemed like a, like a tempest in the teapot to me. I mean, well, it was only because of, of Thunderfoot, Dr. Mason making a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah. I think we're seeing a certain of uh, what I would call an atheist meltdown happening. As I started, I started out saying earlier, we've seen some, conversions lately we've seen others who are critical of atheism coming out yeah I, I, i've seen a, a, a kind of grumblings of discontent uh from within from within atheism and uh, uh stefan molyneux or however you pronounce his name uh, who i'm not really a big fan of did, did he not used to be a, a, an objectivist or Randy? Yeah, he was a he was a, something of an objectivist although like a lot of objectivists he was his own flavor of objectivist i i, can't well, I, I remember like videos like years ago and and his reasoning was just very very bad as is i guess kind of characteristic of of, of objectivists i don't but, know if he's given up and believes in god now but he made a serious era study of aristotle and now he's not so damn confident yeah, well, that, that's that's why I'm saying kind of grumblings of discontent. I'm not okay. saying, and that in and of itself is, is worthwhile, you know. I, in fact, I would rather have that than just a, a huge unexamined leap into 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 you know theism or whatnot. One of the, yeah, I definitely one of the things I keep striving to do, and I hope others do as well. I know there are, are a certain type of Christian are going to jump on any atheist who lays the bandwagon and say here's my bible and i'm going to make you be my type of christian we don't do that i i suggest anybody who leaves atheism take a break and then start seriously studying and looking for serious sources yeah not your ray crumforts not your ken hams not your buddy with a bible find somebody serious who knew you know a religion you know to be stable yeah those things are all important and don't just listen to me um, yeah happy to give you suggestions the way you want to avoid christian cults and there are christian cults and there are fringe christian groups find something you know is respectable and safe and yeah there are choices there there really are um, and, and it goes back to like what we were talking about in an earlier thing is the incuriosity with so many atheists like okay i see this on an internet meme graphic it says oh well religion is just believing what you're told or whatever it's just just some completely ridiculous a uh, 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 straw man but then they accept that, and just this, this garbage kind of like fast food uh, ideology they see on on, on, on on atheism meme graphics. And like, do you really think that in 2,000 years, nobody has addressed these questions? If you ask, well, if God made the world, who made God? Do you really think in the space of 2,000 years, nobody has answered that question? And just the can fact- God make a rock that's bigger than he can pick oh, yeah. I never thought of that one, ever. And then they, and then they, ex then they belabor it, and they explain it. I'm like, oh, okay, come on, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I got it, okay. But I, I, I mean, it just the incuriosity that they think that that a, a, a two liner or something from atheism meme graphic is sufficient, and you have some of the greatest minds of civilization for millennia who have been talking about these things, and just the incuriosity is well, I've never seen anybody answer this question. 
So therefore, why didn't you look? Them. Why didn't you look? Why didn't you think to check? Yeah. somebody smart. Why did you go to like? <laughs> because they have been, they have been implanted. They have been implanted with the prejudice that anyone who is religious has nothing to contribute. It's like, yeah, like everybody's religious is the dummy who thinks, look, God designed the banana as a snack yeah. for my hand. And like, yeah. what? Okay, listen, it's easy to pick on retarded religious people. I can pick on retarded atheists all day. Just go listen to our take down of Kyle Kolinsky. Yeah. But really, <laughs> here's the, oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I just, I just want to get this. Uh, uh, when uh, my, my, uh, I did a, a Google Hangout with a with a, a guy named Dieter Lukum, who's an atheist, and uh, it, I, I should have been a lot more aggressive with it. I'm not really happy with my performance, but uh, he did this thing where he thought like the first cause argument is is like God created the world, and they kind of they they were kind of like going uh, along with that for a few centuries, and then somebody said, "Oh, wait, wait a minute! If God created the world, who created God?" And then they had to revise the entire. Uh, they had to re revise the entire thesis after a few centuries because what finally the, what, asked, the, what does the uh, you know you can find it I, well, I never even bother with the Bible because I don't need it for most of this but right there in the Bible uncreated unmoved eternal yes do you can you use a dictionary do you know yes <laughs> it's in the Bible it's in the Quran that way it's 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 in other religions that way, uncreated, unmoving, eternal, unchanging. Are these sounding familiar? Uh, yeah, oh, he, he fixed the laws of heaven and earth. You know, I. Um, it's 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 like they. Oh, and, and by the way, that's another thing. Is, is that oh well, uh, atheists call uh, God the man in the sky, oh, and and uh, it says, well, Leo, you know, the uh, Michelangelo painted uh, God as a man. Well, yes, it's a painting. You know, how else are you going to? Paint and, and invisible, immaterial, spaceless, I must. No, nobody understood yeah. symbolism until atheists came along and invented it for us. I think they invented both symbolism and evidence, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> but but yes. it says we we are the image of, of the invisible God. That's, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm and not. the thing is that when we were when we were when I was a kid, I am I am the older one here. But when I was a kid, as a kid. When you would wink and say the man in the sky, I'm 50. Um, you know, in the 70s, if you winked and said the man in the sky pointing upwards, you were joking and you expected everybody else who was a Christian yeah. to be sharing in like, like we know it's not that simple. We're, we're just being silly. And or, the, now, or the man upstairs, you know. The man upstairs, yeah. Literally a man upstairs. Um, nobody really thought nobody thought that you did not invent sarcasm. You did not invent irony. Christians knew how to do that before you were yeah. bored. They did. Sorry. Um, it's just like I get, you know, same thing when you go read the Bible, especially if you're anything by St. Paul. If you don't know that man is sarcastic and ironic, uh, you, know, <laughs> I, you miss them. You miss a lot. Yeah. Right? But um <sighs> What I also saw this week, and I'll take a little credit for it, um, Bishop Robert Barron got an interview on the Rubin Report. Yes. I'll take a little credit for it because about a month before it happened, I had, I and others on the uh, team had tweeted Dave Rubin some infographics made by, you know, Eve Kaninen with provocative quotes by Robert Barron saying, we dare you, we dare you, we dare you to bring on Robert Barron. And apparently others did too, I don't know, but... Uh, Boom, about almost exactly 30 days later, there he is, Robert Barron on the Rubin Report. And it was really interesting. If you've ever watched the Rubin Report, he does self-identify as atheist, but he's one of the few that I've seen who seems not to be ideological or not very ideological. Yeah. He seems to have really bought into the, I just don't see a need for this. And so I, whatever, well, I'm not that curious, right? Yeah, well, even saying, hey, a religious, a, a religious person might have something valuable to that might have something valuable to contribute. Even that is a radical position for an atheist to take. Yes, and I give props to Dave Rubin for that. Yeah. He has interviewed people like that. The interview with, with, with Bishop Barron is stellar, though. You could just kind of see during the conversation, the person doing, you know, being surprised was always Dave Rubin. Um, it, you could almost see it on his face at a couple of times, like, <laughs> holy shit, this guy's like got 
fifty IQ points on me. This is yeah. And, and, and but I mean, he's being kind and gracious, and he takes. But he's you know, it's clearly almost every answer makes Ruben just stop back and go, "Wow, I had uh, okay." <laughs> Moving on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of that. That was, oh, that's very interesting. I never heard that before. It was pretty darn cool, actually. But yeah, no, I, I did not awesome. see it. I, I, I read an article on, I think it was on a wintry night or something, about the uh, about atheist reaction to it, and I was, like, genuinely surprised. Um, well, that's because the only responses that could be negative would be unhinged and un dishonest, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I saw one from a some kind of LGBT activist screaming, "This man thinks you're all going to burn in hell if you aren't exactly yeah. like him." And I remember responding, "Say, why do you lie like that? Just go listen yeah. to him." Um, yeah, Bishop Aaron was extraordinarily good. It's totally worth the watch. It really okay. is. I think it's going to bring. I think good things are going to happen because at some point, this whole atheists being afraid to talk to the God people is just not good for anybody. Yeah. If but uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, uh, uh, like I said, the, the grumblings of discontent from within the the atheism community, the fact that, yeah, they, they kind of said, okay, uh, uh, atheists own uh, all, all, all the entire intellectual civilization. We own evidence, whatever. And now maybe they're actually coming into their own kind of adolescence. Who knows? Maybe, maybe you know, 10 years in, they're actually going to find, hey, you know, uh, uh, you know, these, these thinkers have been thinking about these issues for millennia. We've been here all along. You know, welcome to the party. Uh, yeah. so the, there's yeah. a group of discontent from within atheism. I'm also noticing uh, within the past few months, and feel free to disagree with me, uh, there's been a lot more pushback when people, when, when uh, uh, like Facebook pages or whatever, try to do the, the standard... Uh, the kind of pandering atheism, let's feel good about ourselves, and they kind of throw it out. I've been noticing a lot more pushback when it comes to stuff like that. There's a a, a Facebook page called The Other 98%, obviously. It's, it's a left-leaning blog. And then they did something with the with the uh, uh, hate, Large Hadron Collider. It says, well, you can't pray this kind of stuff to work. It's like science works. You know, yeah. you can't pray. <laughs> Uh, especially, uh, that's particularly ironic given that the, the the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, has to date not produced a final <laughs> result after quite some time. Just saying. But anyway. But you can't do that with prayer. Not like any any Christian has ever said you could. But hey, but no, they so they post it's 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 a standard pandering atheist. Let's feel good about ourselves for no reason at all. Kind of uh, graphic. But in the comments to this was just pushed back. People hated it. And I that's maybe it's just something I'm noticing. But I think maybe if you did that like two years ago in the left leading blog, you would not have gotten that kind of pushback. Well here's no. what I keep hoping happens on the left. A rediscovery of God on the left. Even if it's I mean, sir, I want everybody to be a certain type of Christian. Okay, everybody be Catholic with me. But if that's not gonna happen, still rediscovering God and respect for spirituality would do wonders for the left, actually. Yeah. Um, because it's not like every left wing idea is is definitionally a bad idea. Um, but when you demonize the religious people, I mean most people believe in God. I just saw yeah. another survey recently in the UK where supposedly, you know. It's, you know, religion is dead. Not only is religious attendance starting to grow again, but um, two thirds of Britain still say they believe in God. Yeah. I mean, they're not all Christians and, and then observance is low, but it is normal to believe in God, people. It is. I mean, hmm. if I can even just get that out, it's normal to believe in God. It's okay. It's, it really is okay to talk about it, think about it. Be yeah, curious about it. It is even useful in science. This, this is this is one of the things I still want to keep getting across. Go look at the proof for God from science. Know that it's only a starting point in multiple areas of study. The fact is that if you assume, if you get rid of the materialist idea and realize that there are forces outside the laws of physics as we know them, um, that actually opens up ideas for research. Atheism <laughs> literally closes them off when it just assumes a materialist universe, which is almost all they do. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it closes, I mean, literally, 
I, I defy anybody to go again to look at Dr. Jeff Long's work on near-death experience and say that that's electrochemical effects. You can't, and you can't say it's not science either. Mm -hmm. that, that people will work that hard to explain something away. That's atheists impeding research. Yeah. And I, I had one of them, these guys again, uh, that had no fact did it to me. He said, I will assume everything has a materialist cause yes. unless I can prove otherwise. And it's like that statement is 100% ideological. It is 0% science. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Oh, well, there there is uh, there's some uh, electricity in the brainstem uh, after death. It's like well that that takes care of that. You know it's you that explains away the the near death experience. Obviously, I, I, and you can't actually explain it that way. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I don't know if you saw this. Claim. That's an extra based on the data we have. That's an extraordinary. Yeah, claim. yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't explain uh, 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 the the just the experiences themselves it doesn't explain them in, in the uh, phenomenological sense i don't know if you saw this in, in the comments to one of our talks uh some guy was saying he was like oh you retard you can't understand he was like saying well the because of like a, a, a adrenaline or something the eye the pupils dilate or something and that explains the bright white light he's like calling me stupid because i did not accept this as scientific fact even though people who study this kind of stuff like jeffrey long people who study would not accept that but because it's just kind of a just so story that supports this naturalistic worldview he's accepting it as fact and it doesn't even matter. I mean, and, and really, that's only about a third of near-death experience patients anyway. You yeah. have the bright white light. It's like, what? I, 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 I'm sorry, not, not to... Evidence People need to know naturalism is not science. Nope. Just because it's something is a naturalistic explanation does not make it a scientific explanation. There was a kind of invasion of philosophical naturalists in the sciences in the English speaking world starting in the 70s that seems to have gone over into overdrive the last decade yeah. or so. Um, but they were never like, it wasn't because the philosophical naturalists had done anything. They just yeah. managed to convince everybody this is the way to go. Dawkins yeah. is of that generation. Um, many of that generation have abandoned that view. A number of growing number of sciences, scientists now are abandoning it in physics, in biology, and elsewhere. It doesn't even make sense. How can you think, okay, how can you think uh, the social sciences um, can exist at all if everything has a material cause, right? Like just even public opinion polls. Yeah. And, and if you say that that's not science, it's like, okay, what else isn't science then? Yeah. Right. OK, so basically no social sciences. OK, so let's see. Uh, most medical tracking studies, uh, which is, includes what they do on drug trials, uh, those can't be double blinded and are very hard to replicate and yeah. expensive to replicate. So are they not science now? Where do you where do you go in this little game of that's not science? That's not science. You really you're going to reduce everything. Yeah, I'd say it to that same bat. No guy. He claims that science has explained the laws of physics. Really? And yet his yes. explanation was to point to the math formulas. And it's like, really? <laughs> really? So, the, you know, the whole question of why does it go that way and why ain't they changing or do they change at all? Yeah. And you just get right past that question. I'm, I'm just I, amazed how ideological they are and they can't see how ideological they are. I know, are. I know. They, they are the indoctrinated ones. And the, it's, it's like Sargon's Law applies or something. Yeah. They're totally indoctrinated with these materialist assumptions and these these linguistic things that make them think that faith equal believing things without evidence. No, it yeah. doesn't. As uh, Nicholas Taleb, who's you know the black swan fallacy guy, he's been talking, writing about this magnificent lately. He's like, no, faith is understood by the religions is more like trust. Yeah. Well, that's, that's hardly news. I mean, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. But they can't hear it. They've all been programmed with these assumptions. Yeah scared with these assumptions and, and and some of it's from the popular entertainers some of it's just been pushed into the the school system yeah. or something especially I, if they're going to college these days i guess yeah i, I mean that's the whole thing uh, uh, uh faith is just believing without evidence god is an invisible man in the sky a lot of times when you try to contradict them and say no -uh, no it's they'll just contradict they have they've got nothing it's like oh well this is what the bible says the bible doesn't even support that view like no no, you. It's like, Here, it's like you completely back them into a corner because that is their article of faith. 
They it's have faith, been used. faith is belief without evidence. God is an invisible man in the sky. The the Bible is written in Bronze Age goat herders. Back them into a corner and said, "Oh well, I don't I don't have to prove anything. I'm an atheist." Being an atheist is basically just a license for making claims without evidence. Uh, that's how they treat it. Yeah, yeah. like I'm just right by default. Now you have yeah. to prove me wrong. And it's like, yeah. do I even want to play that? I really don't want to play that. Um, I came to my conclusions. Um, they took me a long time to arrive at. I concluded based on evidence what what I was what I was going to believe and what I was going to trust. I didn't say anybody else had to draw those same conclusions, but how dare you think I have to prove anything to you at all? Yeah. I have no burden of proof or anything else. I made a rational conclusion based on evidence, and I'm glad I made it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm now, thanks to all this, I'm also educating my child, who, by yes. the way, really loves going to church and really loves God. And anybody who says he's being brainwashed can seriously go fuck themselves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I, I like how you're talking about the, the near psychotic rage. It, 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 oh, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's near psychotic rage that anybody would teach a child. Here's the thing. It's like something's happened in the education system, in the media environment. People think there is no rational evidence for God. Where there is, and there always has been, um, a lot of it's been pushed out somehow of the culture. Um, some of it deliberately, I think. Um, that's what your four horsemen were all about. There's, mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Other people just have a natural intuitive sense of God in the spiritual. Yeah. And if they can't articulate it very well, that doesn't make them wrong. It yes, make them I, wrong I, I agree all. 100%. In fact, even if they have kind of retarded reasoning sometimes, if you, or what seems retarded to you, it still doesn't necessarily make them wrong, right? Just like... Uh, I don't know. Give, give me another example. Uh, somebody who thinks eating fruit is good for you because the fruit fairies improve your health. Well, that's dumb, but he's right that eating fruit is good for you. So yeah. going after simple minded religious people, it really, it bugs me on so many levels. I, I, I mean, I mean that to me is, is kind of, it's compelling because, because, when I view the beauty, when I view the beauty of nature, it, it is very clear to me that there there is a, a communication. There is there is a point of communion with a, the person who is appreciating the beauty and and, and the creator who is trying to transmit this beauty. And so that that's that's very compelling for me. In fact, that would go past all all, all uh, God of philosophers kind of stuff. And so even if only that. That would be compelling, and so uh, that I mean, sorry, I, I kind of lost my train of thought. No, I understand. <laughs> yes. you that's what, if so, if somebody has only that, or 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 to use uh, the phrase that Daniel Dennett kind of uh, dismissively uses, like that warm feeling in the chest or something. Hey, let's say that religious belief is just that warm feeling in your chest. That would still weigh positively against an absence of evidence that God doesn't exist. Now, I'm not claiming that there's an absence of evidence that God doesn't exist. I'm just saying that atheists refuse on principle to provide, to furnish any evidence that God doesn't exist. So I would say, still say that the warm feeling in the chest would weigh positively against an absence of evidence that God does not exist. I, I, the, the, to put it shortly, the fact that people have a natural warm feeling that God exists is evidence that God exists. I'm yes. sure that it does. It is evidence in and of itself. Classically, it's called the argument from desire. Yeah, those, um, yes, the, yes, which yeah. a lot of people say is too weak. And but I'll give it to you. If we evolve this capacity, if you yeah. believe in evolutionary biology, if we evolve this capacity, this need, uh, by what extraordinary claim would you say we must therefore dismiss it? It's dangerous. Yeah. Really? Back that up. Prove your extraordinary claim, please. This is actually that is actually a piece bombers. of evidence, huh? <laughs> because suicide bombers just, just suicide open, bombers. open people up to the possibility of God. Suddenly, they're they're blown. Here's what I'll say. Um, one, I think the reason we get rich Western kids becoming Islamist crazies is because many of them intuit correctly that their yes. innate sense that God is real. That, you know, it matches up and they become religion. Most religious, most people become religious, including most children of atheist homes become religious. Um, so their God curiosity kicks in. They've already been poisoned against the nonviolent Christianity. Yes. So they get curious about Islam and they are very subjected to the radical terrorist 
propaganda at that point because they got no sane religious education before that. Yeah, well, that's that's I mean that problem was apparent to me from the beginning at, from the very beginning of the New Atheist Project is that yeah Dawkins was chopping away at the middle. It's like well then you're just leaving the extremes. There's going to be no other option than the extremes if if you just keep chopping away at the middle. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sorry. I know you don't like that. The whole idea of religious moderates. I know. I know you don't like that. But I mean, well, yes and no. Who oh, really? It, it's it's not the not radicals who are going to be touched. We're not going to be. I don't, I don't believe in religious moderates. Wait a minute. Yeah. Where did I get that? I, I don't have a problem with religious. I don't like the. No, phrase I, I thought you didn't moderate. like the, the phrase. I thought you didn't like the phrase. Oh well, you know, it depends on how it gets used. Yeah. No, I take it back. Yeah, I've seen them playing little games where they're chopping away at the moderates by implying there's something wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of some sneaky stuff they have been. Um, um, but th th we've seen atheists doing that, so that the, the religious moderates don't really believe the Bible, whereas the creation yeah. and ham people, extremists, do really believe the Bible, and that's like, come on. Well, that's that's another thing. When I, like, when I see like interviews with Richard Dawkins, and he talks about sophisticated theologians, and and this guy, what, when I see Richard Dawkins, he talks about the sophisticated theologians. Uh, I I think he seems to think that sophisticated theologians think God is just sort of like a metaphor or something, that they don't actually believe that God actually exists, that he's just like a metaphor or something. I I really don't understand. He, I, I and the funny thing is, is of the of the original New Atheist contingent who are still alive. I think he may be the first one to finally decide he believes in God. We'll see. I, I have a feeling. I, I was going to say that's because, a common thing to happen. You know, it used to be common for atheist philosophers and others to come up, change their minds in late night. In late yeah, night. well, now now he's he's a profound. He stopped being a research scientist forty years ago. Yeah, and I know you have strong feelings, but no, I, that's actually uh, that's actually something I've had in my mind to kind of ask you for a while now. Actually, since I've been doing this. You, you you pile so much invective on a guy like on a guy like Richard Dawkins, which may be deserved. But yeah, let's say you you hop on your uh, computer tomorrow, and in a little trending feed of Facebook or something, you say, you know, fame world famous atheist declares that he is now a Christian convert. You know, if if that came up in the news tomorrow, that Richard Dawkins had fat, had had a religious experience, had found God, and completely backtracked on everything he said. I mean, how, how would you react to that? I mean, would, I'd, have to, that I'd, have probably have to, I'd have to probably have to pray on it for a while because it would be hard for me. It would be inappropriate for me to be unwelcoming. And yet at the same time, I would it'd be hard for me not to say how much damage he's done. I, yeah. Here's the thing. I come out of nerddom and maybe one day, one, we've talked about it before, not today, but maybe one day we'll get to it. Talk about how upset I am with nerd culture. Yes. Um, the nerd culture, I remember, that always had its atheists around, but that we had fun arguments and always somebody wanted to talk about something else like reincarnations and ghosts. I mean, that was just part of nerd culture, and it's not anymore. It's also hostile. But um, um, to anything that's not scientism and naturalism. Um, but and so and the thing is, is though I always love science. I love science as much as these people pretend they do. Only I've really studied it. And I've talked to real scientists and known real scientists going back to like the 80s, right? So these people start talking about science and it fills me with rage because they're putting out pseudoscience and pretending to be the owners of science. Believe it or not, that offends me more than like blaspheming against God or whatever. Send me a Jesus picture, a picture of Jesus giving someone a blowjob. Okay, fine. I've seen it, whatever. But pretend you're the avatar of science. Oh, my God. Mm. I, and, and that really offends me. Because they, yeah. it's it's like Richard Dawkins is not strong as a scientist. Sam Harris is not a scientist at all. Um, I just watched Phil Mason implode recently, and I have a theory as to why he's imploding. I mean, uh, is that Thunderfoot? The, Thunderfoot, yeah, he's imploding in the argument with Lauren Southern. It's why I brought it up in the beginning. Um, one of the things I've noticed, it's 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 a common trait of all the atheist YouTubers and atheists and generalists, all they can think about is what they want to destroy. And Thunderfoot was out of things that just to destroy that weren't his fellow atheists. <laughs> and although maybe Lauren Southern identifies as an atheist, I don't know. But it was clear that he was just, I see this personality trait in the atheist. It's funny. They're always mm. magnificent at tearing other people down.
Yeah. When they have not, you know, when they can't think of who they want to turn out, uh, turn on, you know, tear apart now, they go and find somebody and yeah. they're not inspired. Like TJ and Kirk tried tearing me down. And I was like, what I saw was I could just laugh at it. I didn't care. Yeah. They start running out of people to tear apart. They start running out of things to tear apart. I don't think Phil Mason is going to be able to stay much credible much longer and stay wedded to this dogmatic atheism of his. In fact, I've given this theory before, but I'm going to put it out again. It's very clear if you know anything about theology that 10 years ago when the new atheist craze came out, it was a cultural Marxist planted thing. It wasn't organic. Um, there were always good arguments against what all the, the original four horsemen were saying. Their critics were silenced by the media. Yeah. You know, even now, you don't hear their strongest critics like Ed Fazer and others in the mainstream media. They've still got that, the atheists up against the likes of Ken Ham, um, who I'm sorry is not very bright and very weird guy, right? I don't share yeah. much of his theology. Um, I think a lot of the atheist YouTubers got sucked into the new atheist cult. It was a cult movement like a Deepak Chopra or any of those others that do the book circuit. They were going to make a better world and a better life through atheism. That's what they sold. Yes. Um, so, real okay. critics that would call them on their shit were not allowed on the stage with them. Um, and a lot of these hangers on who fell for it, your Sargon of Akkad's, your your Phil Mason's, a lot of these others, when that big skepticism hit a few years ago, um, that was basically the Mensheviks and the useful idiots being given the boot. And that's mm. who guys like Sargon of Akkad and Thunderfoot were. They really bought that being an atheist made them super smart. And yeah. they were going to come yeah. and condescendingly bring reason and rationality and evidence to the world. And they yeah. got to pick on some dumb fundamentalist Christians and be treated like they were super geniuses until they were no longer useful and then they were given the boot and it was time yeah. for people like Lacey Green and Steve Shives and all those other people to come to the fore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they were used because there was never anything to the new atheism. There still isn't. There's, I mean, it's so shallow. The the oh, God sorry, delusion sorry. the God delusion like really could have been written by an angry fifteen year old who didn't like yes the oh my God or, or, uh, what, what, uh, uh, God is not great he does the standard angry thirteen year old I'm pissed off that my parents make me go to church yeah I'm going to a God with a lowercase g okay and hey it's I love I love when atheists are, 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 are on the internet. They always have they always have God with a lowercase g in quotation marks around. It. It's like, hey, I haven't been able to figure out how exactly you feel about this. I haven't been able to piece together your true feelings on this. I'm edgy. I'm edgy. I'm edgy. I'm yes. edgy. I'm gonna blow your mind. God, I, 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 oh, you're so bright. I mean, I remember. I, I'm sure uh, you remember this too. It goes back to like Usenet in the '90s, and like kid, little pissed off thirteen year old would have their warlord signatures with the lowercase god, and it's like, okay, you, you got. It's like this, that little like that little uh, alt atheism uh, bubble has just expanded, but it's it's still just as insipid as ever. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I'm talking about the alt atheism, and they even well, back. It's, not, it's insipid and hostile. That's the worst yes. part. Insipid and hostile. Like we're destined to rule the world. Shut up, you little, you know, you stupid theist. I mean, I had another one oh. refer to the religious element. The religious element, really. Oh, thank you, Master. We all know the religious element is danger. No, we won't talk about the atheist element. Oh, yes. Shall we? Yes. Uh, uh, they really don't see how condescending they are. That's that's that, that's what really blows me away. They cannot see how condescending they are. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we got we got sidetracked. We were talking about. We I did. Gonna say, uh, 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 God is not great. It certainly has pissed off a, a 13 year old all over it. But yes. That's but that was, also, I want to say I thought it was funny. You talked about Steve Shives and Lacey Green as the Bolsheviks. <laughs> could could you get more? These can you get people who are more of just like wet rags than they are? Well, I know, and I don't, you know, I don't mean in the literalist, they literally have guns and they're literally yeah. going to start shooting people, but no, you see this trend, you see it in certain social movements of the far left. 
um, that, you know, the new generation just eats the old generation, right? And some people were useful for the cause yeah. for a while. Now they're no longer. Boom, they get the boot. Yeah. You know, and they don't know what happened because they were never that smart in the first place. Yeah. But they were being treated like they were way smarter than they were. Yeah. Um, feed their egos. Um, that's how this game is played. And so, yeah, uh, really, Thunderfoot lost it because people within that community who were far left were waiting to spring the trap. Unfortunately for them, Thunderfoot was much smarter than PC Myers, and it was really obvious to everybody. But PC Myers is mentally ill. Well, he is. It, it and, is very clear to me he's mentally ill. But it's also pretty clear that even poor Dr. Phil Mason, Thunderfoot, is out of gas. He doesn't have anything to add. He's not relevant anymore. The left has already that that's actually in charge of thing has already sidelined him for being non-feminist, and he's not ever getting back in. Um, his own brand of leftism isn't going to work, um, and frankly, his position on religion is not even scientifically tenable. At some point, I hope the man wakes up. Mm, um, mm, mm. But that, that's why I mentioned all this because that's how I really see. Um, you know, he's losing his shit going after Lauren Southern. Not that she's imperfect, but he was just way over exaggerating the significance of her wrong. Yeah. Uh, she was, I mean, the biggest one was she was in the middle of a fucking riot and she said something like, this is what the anti Trumpers look like. And, you know, literally she was in a mob. And yes. Out. They were, they were and, busting and, in store and, windows, yeah. And, and, and then from there, we're going to extrapolate this is because she's totally in the tank, completely as an alt-right stooge and a Trump pump. But it's like, dude, she's in, and she, she apologized and says, you're absolutely right, which is all she had to say, right? She says, I'm absolutely right, you know, except I was freaking out. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I, which is what it looked like right there. Well, I mean, I mean she does have a point. If, if you're at an anti-Trump rally, there is a good chance of violence. I mean... You know plenty of people who aren't anti-Trump aren't like that. Okay, but really, if I'm in the middle of that crowd, that that shit was going to be... Cars were being vandalized and yeah. all that kind of shit was going on, I, you're not going to blurt out the most professional nuanced analysis. <laughs> And, and, and the problem isn't even that I'm on her side, per se. The problem is Phil Mason trying to make a mountain out of that molehill. You know, uh, screams of somebody whose own relevance is going into decline. Yeah. Because <laughs> really, he's a science guy who's like, would make a good chemistry teacher. Yeah. Well, he's he... not, you know, he's not all that. Most yeah. of the new, none of the new atheist contingent ever were. Yeah. Uh, none of them were. And they seem to just be getting dumber by the day. Yes, yes. Angrier and angrier and dumber and dumber. That, that's that's kind of my my whole impression of a whole lot of the New 18s, is that they're basically manufactured heroes. Like, okay, well, this person has, has some degree of accomplishment. I, I mean, let's face it. If, if PZ Myers was not an atheist, he would just be some, some middling professor at some middling college. He would be no one. It's I mean, yeah, it's basically a community college, is what he did. If, 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 yeah, I'm basically, if, if Lawrence Krauss was not a public atheist, uh, uh, he would certainly not be, uh, probably a, a, a cosmologist, uh, worthy of particular note. I don't think I'm not, I'm not an expert. That's just my impression that he's certainly more famous for being, for being a, an, an atheist. And I, so, let these people. Yeah, I can tell you that Krauss is not that great a shakes as a, as a physicist. Yeah. Not that he's viewed as an idiot physicist. I mean, just in terms of the world's greatest physicists, he ain't one. Yeah. Well, because I remember him being, being kind of a popularizer. I think he wrote, like, the physics of, of Star Trek and stuff. And so he, he was kind of like a, a, a pop culture quantity before even the new atheism thing. But, I mean... Yeah, and that, and that goes back to their worship of science, really. They'll just take a guy seriously if he's got a degree in science, whether he's actually got anything on the ball. Or whether not. or not it actually supports an atheist worldview. Oh, well, this guy is a man of, of, of some degree of scientific accomplishment, and he's an atheist, so he's useful to our purposes. And all Therefore, of that... We can create this image that atheism is somehow scientific. And I grew up not only as a nerd who loves science, but I was serious about it. You know, I've actually read Einstein's own book on where he explains relativity. 
I have read um, some, uh, Richard Feynman is brilliant. One of my favorite writers, favorite scientists. I've read the, the original work of many great scientists. I have a, a, such a love for the sciences. And so yeah. this is when I see these atheists running around with these pretenses of science, it's like, holy shit, they don't know what they're talking about. Almost yes. invariably, they do not. They is this do not. Talking about? Yeah, yeah. This is why I get so mad at Richard Dawkins, especially because I can prove to you that selfish gene is not science. It's not. Yet you've got all these nerds running around quoting it. Um, find me a molecular bio bi biologist or a geneticist who will say, yeah, that, 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 selfish gene thing makes sense no they'll all say it doesn't make any sense at all it's completely incoherent hmm. it doesn't describe anything it doesn't describe anything yeah right? not even wrong it's just garbage yeah and, and mimetic theory has nothing to it at all yeah and and it makes me angry because these are the people who run around talking about science and even talk about how people who don't agree with them are science deniers yet their their heralds are you know, they all are, are, are empty suits. And that really infuriates me because I love science. I think ultimately Richard Dawkins' legacy is going to be the word meme, where a bunch yeah. of people who talk about internet memes have no idea where the word came from. I think that that's going to be his lasting and it's totally, legacy. And word it's totally, meme. Yeah, the word meme, and it's totally people not. Talking like cats, that, you know, lol cats and stuff, memes, that's his legacy. And within mimetic theory, that's not what he was talking about either. Yes. So the meme, he was talking about something with, with the memes. ability to propagate itself. The, yeah, the ability with memes. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he's he's known for something that he didn't even create. He just came up with a catchy slogan for it. Yeah. The internet meme. Yep, he's got that. All right, I'll tell you what. We've gone about long enough, I'd say. We've rambled a bit. Um, I, did you have anything else you wanted to get in? No, I think I think <laughs> Dawkins' legacy is the word meme. So so next time you see a kid, uh, uh, you know, yeah, everybody. that's it. That's it. I remind everybody, please subscribe to both our channels. Please like, subscribe. Please support us on Patreon. I'm thinking about doing a fundraiser to get a better mic. People complain about my breathing. I think maybe a better mic would help. Hmm. Um, you sound better than you did uh, uh, two times before we did this. So winter yeah. weather, winter weather gets to be hard, even though I. I, uh, contrary to rumors, I exercise daily, um, including resistance training a few times a week. But yeah, I still have breathing issues. It tends to be worse in the winter. So yeah, blah blah blah. Feel sorry for me. Wham wham. We'll see you no, all. I was, guys. I was just talking about your equipment. I was just talking about your equipment in one in one of the podcasts. I've got the I've got the mic further away from me, and I'm just yelling. Okay. <laughs> it seems that to work. Naturally. Yeah, so it seems to work a little bit better. Um, give us a like, give us a subscribe, go support us on Patreon and elsewhere. If you, if there's an atheist video you really want us to do a takedown on, send it to us. Make it something good. Yeah, um, something short. Something like two or three minutes because we could get an hour out of that. We could. Well, I mean, I was tempted by uh, one. Uh, there was one by an atheist named Lee Lemon who said, why, why our evidence is not evidence. And I'm like, oh, that's. That's got to be lovely. It was 20 minutes. Well, anyway, we'll be back next week. Also look forward to my interview uh, with the molecular biologist from the Freedom from Atheism Foundation in the next week or so. What have you got coming up, Mr. Deflating? Uh, anyway. Big changes coming to my channel soon. I know, I know it's my channel's been kind of dead recently. Big, exciting changes. So, so stay tuned. All right, big exciting changes, and you'll have to take him on faith on that one since he has no <laughs> faith. Well, See y'all later. Come on by. Tell all your friends and enemies. <laughs>